Bank angle, bank angle, caution, terrain. So I made this video for you guys. I want to give back to the community, the intermediate pilots that haven't gone cross country yet. You're well and truly versed in flying your favorite thermic site. You've caught your first thermals. You've even topped some of them out. You've hung around the hill and you're dying to go cross country. This video is for you. Listen up, it's gonna be a cracker. So I've made this video in two parts. The first part we're going to cover what you need, what you don't need, weather, planning, all the stuff that goes into preparing for success for your first cross country flight. The second part of this video embraces what we've learnt in the first part of the video. Come with me, we go on a 67 kilometre cross country flight from York, Western Australia all the way to Gamelling. We could have gone further, we had a pick up, you'll see. I'm going to put all the flight data in there so you can track me real time as we fly. Hopefully you get a lot out of this, if you do, leave a comment. I'm putting back into the community, I'm providing this for you guys, so I'd love a subscription. Support me so I can keep making these videos for you guys. It's what it's all about, look after one another. Fellow pilots, enjoy the video. So guys, we're going to go for a fly in the second half of this video. Until then, this is what you need to do the day before. You need to grab all your kit, you need to pull it apart, and you need to empty everything out of it. Start all over. Pack light and pack the essentials. Let's prepare for the flight. What do we actually need? What I find essential, absolute bare basics. Water, fluid, gotta have fluid. I carry mine in a camelback. I'd normally additionally carry a two litre water bottle that I would uh, drink before takeoff. That way I'm well hydrated. Uh, yes, it's probably gonna cause dramas later, but there's nothing worse than being dehydrated. You've got this as a backup. Uh, you could have a long walk home, remember, so uh, make sure you carry water with you. This is 2.5 litres, works perfectly. What else is important? Flight instrument. This is an OD5. It's a fully capable cross-country instrument. You don't need this instrument. It's got a colour screen, it's easy to read, it's got beautiful maps, it's got planning software, it's got everything, it's got fame in. Uh, you do not need this machine. You can get away with a nice uh, easy to read, grayscale uh, flight computer, something that's easy to read in the daylight, at the very minimum, a Vario. Do not leave the hill without a Vario, you will need one. It's a 22 amp hour, uh, 2200 amp hour battery charger. I've got two ports in it, which I charge my phone, I keep my phone on charge. I like to run uh, Fly Sky High as an app alongside my flight computer, and I use this purely for tracking purposes. Uh, it's just easier to set and forget. I generally leave my phone inside uh, the zipped up cockpit, plugged into this, so I've got full, uh, full battery. If I land, I need to uh, call someone anyway to let them know I've landed if I'm not flying with anyone. Uh, it's the right thing to do. Depending on where you're flying, you may or may not need to uh, carry a radio. I carry one at all times. Um, you never ever know when you're going to be in a tree somewhere and you might be able to get someone that even if it's even if it's a truckies channel if no one else is on your normal channels this could save your bacon so carry it. It's a muesli bars. They pack up so tiny. I carry them in my flight cockpit. You never know when you're going to get the munchies in midair or even on the walk home. Who knows? Take your wallet people's. Take your wallet with you. Or at the very least some ID. You don't always get to choose where you land. There might be a pub or a, or a Burger King or a, or a who knows. Take your wallet with you. Lastly, your phone, guys. It's important to call someone before you take off, before you leave. Let them know where you're going at least or which direction you're expecting to take. Call the same person when you land. It's not mandatory, but it is your responsibility to look after yourself and your own safety. Listen carefully and you won't freeze your tits off.
You guys are going to have a laugh having a look at this picture. It seems obvious, but you wouldn't believe how many people leave some of this stuff behind. They get to the field, you've forgotten your gloves or your helmet or whatever. It's a personal choice what you do wear when you're flying, but remember, we're going XC here. It's going to get cold. You're probably going to be in the air a long time. So I'd recommend as a minimum, gloves, boots, helmet, obviously your wing. A couple of additional items I've thrown in here. The shark skin item you can see there is a, uh, we call it a rashi here in Australia. I'm not sure. It's a, it's a very light wet suit. It's designed to keep you warm uh, when you get out of the water or in the water even. Um, I find it a brilliant windbreak. It is really good. I chuck a singlet on underneath. I throw that over the top and then a couple of light layers of uh, long sleeve shirts. I put two of those on. That's my personal preference. I don't like wearing a jacket when I fly. Bear in mind, at 2,000, 2,500 metres, it's going to get cold. It's going to get brutally cold. Might be 45 degrees on launch, guarantee. Where you're flying or where you need to fly to make any distance, it's going to be about 5 degrees, if that. The beanie there, you don't have to fly with a beanie. I'm bald. I feel the cold. Fly with a cap, fly with just your helmet, whatever. I like to take my beanie. The only thing missing from the picture, of course, is the harness. I like to fly with a pod harness when I go XC. The only time I'd use an open harness now is probably soaring on the coast or uh, when I know the conditions inland aren't very good for XC, I'll probably fly with an open harness because it's comfortable. I like flying with an open harness, but this video is all about going XC. I'm gonna be using a pod later on in the video. You use what you like. So guys, it's the day of the flight. The first thing I would do when I get up is wake up, check that the weather's still going to be suitable. Absolute amateur mistake. I forgot to record the actual weather on the day. I found a page in about a week's time that's going to be suitable for the flight that we're actually flying today. So I've got my wind strength. We're taking off from, uh, from York here. We'll be flying to Northam and all the way out to Gemelling. Gemelling's my goal. We've got a nice southerly wind, so the downwind, it supports that direction. It's a suitable direction for uh, this XC. Um, it looks like, I'd like to check the cloud cover here. Look, the cloud cover, it's a bit uh, clear, uh, this area. You probably want a little bit of clouds um, to just to uh, guarantee your, your um, consistent thermals. We've got a little bit of a cloud layer over here to the west um, in this example. Windy X, uh, Windy, sorry, the uh, site that I'm on now has a beta version of the thermal uh, tracker, which you need a subscription for, but this is also really helpful. It tells you the uh, the tops of the thermals. So starting at York, they're around two and a half Ks. Uh, I've got it in meters here, and it's fairly consistent all the way to Gumelling. Um, I would also check, I'm not going to do this right now, but Windy's a really good tool for checking uh, wind at different heights. I'm going to go back to the wind up here. I'm going to put it back at York. You can see it's a southerly direction right now. We're on the surface. If I go up to around the 600 metre, you'll see there's a little bit of east, uh, east-southeast, uh, sorry, south east-southeast, correct, coming through, around 1500 metres. A little bit more of an easterly influence in it. Nothing that's going to bother a flight to uh, to Gemelling and up around the uh, the thermal top. So you can see the wind strengthens, uh, though it does keep that um, that east southeast direction, which is ideal for heading to Gemelling. We don't want anything too east uh, on a flight from Mount Bakewell in York. We have airspace that starts all around here. That'll be the next thing we check. Stay tuned. So guys, the last thing I'd recommend is checking airspace on your route. You can see we start here at York in Class C airspace, which starts at 8,500 feet, and we carry on into Class A airspace again. The lower limit here is 8,500 feet. We're flying below all the airspace. We're good to go. Well, today's the day, champions. The weather's looking awesome. Time to send it. Hey, so we made it to the hill. 
Now's the time to get your head right guys, you've got to get your head in the game, unpack your gear, make sure everything's turned on and in the right spot, in a familiar spot, play with the dog, make sure you rub the lucky dog before you go on your first XC, set up your gear, make sure your harness is all set for you, you'll notice uh, it's on, watch how the wings that launch before you, gives you a good indication of uh, the, uh, the proper direction on launch without the, the compression involved and whether uh, people are going up or staying down. Let's go guys, it's time to send it. Let's go to Gamelling and um, search for our initial climb out. You may need to uh, fly up and down the, um, the ridge lift for a little while until uh, a thermal comes through sight. Nothing better than hearing the uh, the Vario start beeping its head off. Beautiful sound, probably the best sound in the world actually. But uh, I got a really good climb out of here uh, on this day. It's a beautiful day. The wind was uh, a little bit stronger than forecast on launch, uh, which is good because that means uh, we're going to go downwind a little bit quicker. Um, it did die out, but um, listen to that Vario singing. Keep. Keep the thermal cord guys, it's important that you maximise the lift on launch because you don't know what's behind the hill, how far the next uh, climb's going to be. So take this elevator all the way to the top, don't waste a single drop of it. Don't worry about it too much if you do lose it, there's always going to be another one coming through. So uh, just reset, get your head in the right spot, the next one comes through latch onto it, ride it all the way to the top. So I know I'm getting towards the top of the climb here, the air's getting rough, the Vario's going up, it's going down, it's going up, it's going down. We've hit an inversion layer, it's probably about 200 metres lower than the forecast thermal tops. I'm happy with that, we've got some good height uh, to, make, to make really good inroads on the next leg of uh, this XC journey. We'll know we'll get something a little bit further over, uh, back over the hill, so we're ready to go. Righto, this is where it gets interesting guys, the first leg. We've left the, uh, the safety of the lift from the thermal we caught out from, uh, from launch. Now we're in a completely separate phase of flight. One, where we are, one, no longer flying in lift. Two, we need to get to the next saucer lift as quickly as possible so we don't lose a lot of height. How do we do that? We need to fly hands up. We need to fly at trim speed minimum. You don't want to be using your brakes uh, like you would if you're flying along the hill in the ridge lift or in a thermal where you want to slow the wing down so you spend as much time as possible in lift. Remember, we are no longer in lift. Trim speed minimum. I would recommend, depending on any sink you're going through, to use speed bar. Your glider may vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Probably better to ask your instructor about this, but don't use your brakes while you're on speed bar, guys. Uh, I have uh, C and B rear riser steering on my Advance uh, Sigma 11. Uh, I use that while I'm on uh, speed bar for minor pitch corrections and course uh, changes. Um, probably better to stay off your brakes uh, while you're on your speed bar if you are using it. But we need to fly efficiently. Get off the brakes, get on the rear riser steering, control your pitch with either your speed bar or your B, uh, C risers like I have. How much speed bar to use? Well that depends. If you're flying uh, min sync uh, you've got a good tailwind behind you, you know it's a thermic day, you might not get, have to get on the bar that hard until you find the, the next source of lift. Uh, if you are flying through big sink, there's two things you can do about that. You can get on the bar, get out of it. It's often better while you're doing that to change direction as well. Veer off 25, 30 degrees to the left or to the right. Whichever way, you're looking for visual cues up the top with the clouds or, uh, or potential thermal sources on the ground. Don't continue flying through heavy sink. Do something about it. Veer away from it or get through it quickly. Jump on, jump on full bar. 
Now, while we're on the subject of big sink, it's actually good news. That means there's lift very close by. I doubt it's behind you. I would say it's going to be to your left or to your right or possibly in front of you. Now's the time to change direction and find that source of lift. No doubt while on glide, you guys will encounter turbulence. Little bits of unstable pockets of air. It might be lift, it might not be. It might be just a little puff. Helps. While you're flying through these little turbulent patches, it's important to keep the glider inflated. I come off my uh, B and C rises, just get back on the brakes, just putting just enough pressure in the wing, uh, just to keep it stable while I go through the turbulence. And then once you're all in uh, clear air again, you can get back on those B C rises and continue with your, uh, with your glide. Again, just remember guys, when you do come back on to your brakes, just to uh, keep the pressure in your wing, just make sure you, you're getting off your speed bar. You don't want to be using the brakes and the speed bar at the same time. So I'm not getting ultra low here, but a little bit of lift isn't going to go astray. A bit high to uh, go off ground features, so I've angled myself towards this cloud above me. I know there's going to be something underneath it. It is pretty much a bit of a blue hole day, but there should be something under here. Get a little bit of a sniff, start turning, start turning, you don't have to do a perfect 360 and launch yourself right in the middle of the course straight away, it's probably not going to happen. All you're looking to do initially is to start turning. You can widen out your turn, listen to your vario, if it starts dropping off, turn in a bit harder. Box out your turns until you know you've got all sides of the thermal covered then you're in a better position to uh, to really find that core and start listening to your Vario, start looking at your uh, your thermal history if you've got it on your flight computer. All you need to do is find that sweet spot and up you go again. It's not long before I hit turn point one, the town of Northam, way down below. Everything's going really good up to this point. Hook a sweet little climb right over town. I leave Northam pretty high, nothing really to worry about. I start heading north. But I soon find out around 5k's out of Northam, I start getting lower and lower and lower. There's nothing. There's little, little lift little lifty bits nothing really to circle in I, I try uh, I try a couple of times to 360 and nothing's really becoming of it I'm starting to get low I chuck in a quick position report on the radio to uh, the chase car just in case I do bomb out he knows where to find me so now I'm low I'm getting real low I'm looking down at the features on the ground, looking for anything that could release a little bit of lift. Something the dark uh, coloured paddocks where it intercepts the farms, the tree line, uh, the houses, anything. I'm just uh, constantly searching for tiny scarabs of lift, just so I can keep my feet off the ground for a little bit longer. Finally it's crunch time. I'm putting a radio call in to the boys to let them know exactly where I am. I'm expecting to land. Never give up. You'd be amazed at what happens. And then it happens. So just when I thought it was all over, you wouldn't believe it. I catch a scarab of a thermal, get stronger and stronger and stronger as I climb. I was down at 100 metres, there's only 100 metres above the road. And uh, just the, the moral of the story, guys, is don't think about landing until you're landing. Sure, have a backup plan, figure out where you're going to be, look for your power lines and stuff, but 100 metres above the ground, I, I could have sworn it was all over. From here, I just kept going up. It was amazing. I uh, managed to climb uh, back to around 1400 metres. Um, the, the rest I hardly circled the next 20 kilometres on my way uh, to Gamaling, which I, I ended up making. 
In a cruel twist of fate, I could have kept going. I, I arrived at uh, Gemelling. I was still well above a thousand uh, metres there. Unfortunately, well, fortunately I should say, uh, Chad was waiting for me uh, in his car, ready to give me a lift home. He didn't want to drive any further, which is fair enough. The man not flying, doing all the hard work down on the ground, so thank you, Chad, for that. It just goes to show, uh, when it's on, it's on. When it's not, it's not flying full of surprises what a great day had a fantastic day please guys if you've liked this video please share it i'd love to hear your comments let me know how you go on your first xc let me know if you'd uh, like any content covered in future videos and please guys spread the word i really want to keep making these videos for uh, for you intermediate pilots and you can do uh, you can help me out a lot by subscribing be massive guys appreciate your help